Hello survivors and welcome to another Walking Dead Road to Survival video and in this video we're going to be taking a first look at Gold Mythic Winter Benjamin who is going to be the Winter Kingdom event character reward that you can work towards. It is an optional reward you don't have to go for him so we're going to be going over his kit kind of seeing how it works and seeing is he worth picking up as a character. Visually we have not had too many Benjamins in the past I did have it highlighted by someone on a previous video that the best we've had so far is a three star which is actually kind of interesting we haven't had an s class six star or five star but we do get one as a mythic but he's gonna be representing the kingdom as you see the kingdom badge on his arm on the visuals i like it the snowboard in his hands or like the three quarters of a snowboard in his hands gonna be a pretty effective weapon as he slams it down it's got the spikes on the top he's pretty geared up looks pretty good for winter on the left hand side he's using that helmet that's on his back as weaponry as well and you can see there's a walker here I like this part where it's got like the uh, this kind of like Christmas get up with the little like mini Santa hat and stuff like that. Um, but I don't think we're going to get any special walkers in game, unfortunately. That would be kind of cool. Um, at level 1440, limit break three, Benjamin has got 32,057 attack, 19,082 defense, and 25,187 HP. He is a strong character. He is going to be a control role. Of course, he's going to be a mythic. And he's going to be another character joining. The Winter Kingdom Allegiance, previously seeing Madison and a sneak peek at Marcus. Now first we'll go over Benjamin's Adrenaline Rush and it is called Shredem. It is a 66 AP cost rush. It makes two attacks against a line of enemies for 350% damage, 700% total each. Those enemies get minus 75% attack for two turns. He should be hitting each of those enemies twice. For 350 percent damage so it should be a 700 percent damage to two enemies so that's actually pretty significant and because they're attacks it's going to take into account his weapon effects and also it can crit so on and so forth so it can do pretty significant damage here the minus 75 percent attack is interesting i guess it's just to stop you know like basic attack damage from defense team characters being you know powerful but potentially this could work against someone who is in a line with let's say um, Eris, and you've already taken out Eris, you could then rush that line, and Eris should get minus 75% attack if she's already in the Outlast state. Obviously, she cleanses everything um, if she goes into Outlast, so she'd ha already have to be down, but that's the only real reason I can see minus 75% attack being, like, super useful. So we have got the rush, and we are going to rush the top line here. Very heavy bonus HP. We'll try and remove that bonus HP of another character like Madison first if you're going to do this. We're just going to show you how it will it work. It should attack each of them twice, and it will take into effect the weapon, anything that is on the weapon, and you are going to see potential like stuns and stuff come out as it shows, and the minus seventy five percent attack. And I think we did see one crit in there as well. We would have taken out Alice, and we would have got nor to half HP, but all that bonus HP is just obviously problematic you don't want to do what i just did but we have got a stun on attack weapon apparently and you can see one of the characters did get stunned and there's minus 75 percent attack to that line as well now if we look at the upgrades on the adrenaline rush you can see that he gets attacking a line of enemies as an upgrade at grade three at grade five there's another upgrade where those enemies will get minus 75 percent attack for two turns and at limit break two it gets an extra attack where initially it's going to just attack a line of enemies where now it's going to attack a line of enemies twice. So, like, it does obviously double the damage. So that's actually pretty decent. Now, how effective this is going to be is completely down to the weapon, mods, and so on and so forth that you have on this character. You can definitely get amplifiers in there. The weapon, especially, you can get bonus attack against, you know, enemies with certain amounts of HP. This character is strong. So, unfortunately, you're not going to be able to take advantage of that amazing weapon that is in the Faction Assault store. That would work amazingly well on this character with that rush, but it is the way it is. You could see this as character as more of a support character. Because he is a controller, he's not going to do significant damage because he hasn't got agility anyway, so he's not going to get boosts there. But he will have nicer chance of actually controlling the enemy, landing no stun on attacks if he has a stun on attack weapon, landing any other parts of control on his kit, including that minus 75% attack as well. So I think this rush is okay. I think it could do, obviously, more damage. If you had trait damage there, it would have been better. The bottom line with Molly and Dr. Stevens would have definitely been a better line to attack for doing trait damage, but I wanted to show just the overall how, you know, mechanically how it worked with the two separate attacks twice. I think if I attacked the bottom line, it would probably have killed 
one or both of them on the first attack just because it would have been trait damage so you can see the potential is quite high and especially as it can crit more 1535s you have in the team that sort of thing you're going to have a better chance to hit those crits now next up we have winter benjamin's signature move and it's called board bash i do like the little picture of him just you know getting his board in his hands to slam down but he is a turn one initial cooldown and then obviously a cooldown of one turn number of uses unlimited attack an enemy for 400 percent damage but it'll be 700% if that enemy has a debilitating status effect. This is actually pretty good. It's quite a lot like Shane's signature move. Shane is based on their trait. So, for instance, if they are alert. But this just has to have a character that has a debilitating status effect on them already. And then Winter Benjamin will get bonus damage on that character. And there are a lot of characters that do have earlier control on their kits be it on their signature moves or even in their passives like right now we have a character on the defense team that's impaired and that's because of laura where she does impair two characters of the support role so that's actually kind of useful here if we use the signature move of benjamin it would be a 700 percent hit and it can crit so it can do significantly high damage 85k in that case obviously this is without any sort of like amplifiers on his weapon or mods or anything like that so that can definitely get boosted up as well looking at the upgrades on his signature move you can see at grade two it gets 200 percent damage boost so initially it is going to be a 200 percent damage hit and it'll get boosted up to 400 percent at grade four it gets minus one to starting cooldown so initially it is a turn two starting cooldown then it goes down to turn one then at limit break one you get minus one to cooldown so initially it is a two turn cooldown and it goes down to a one turn cooldown and then lastly at limit break three it gets an upgrade where you get 300 percent extra damage if that enemy has a debilitating status effect i think that's pretty much the 700 percent in brackets part because it is obviously 300 percent more damage but that is obviously significantly higher and it would turn this character into a bit more of a damage dealer early on in the fight i think maybe his rush is going to be underrated but um you know it's a very controlled rush but this is very nice indeed just because you can get such high damage boost on this. The fact that you can crit, the fact that you can take into effect weapon effects, the fact that you can get characters with defense down if you team this guy out with like Shane and stuff like that, you can do crazy damage off of the early fight. And there are a lot more fast characters on defense teams as well, so trait damage is definitely possible. And while this character is a control role character, this is going to be very nice in terms of boosting the potential damage that your team will be able to do. So I like this signature move actually quite a lot. It's very reminiscent, like I said, of Shane's, and Shane's is very effective. This is obviously going to have something slightly different on the go where it comes to, there has to be like a debilitating status effect, whereas Shane, like I said, is an alert one. But I think this one's just going to have a better chance of being more um, sustainable throughout the, the course of the fight. If you come up against things with Shane that are alert, obviously he's strong, it's problematic, but I could see this character being used against those like Tyrese full fast defense teams and him nuking someone off of turn one, which will be very nice indeed. So next up, we're going to look at Winter Benjamin's mythic abilities. These are his passive skills, and obviously he has got precision, so enemy resistances are 40% lower against his character whenever he does anything, basic attacks, rushes, signature moves, anything that can potentially apply an effect, or even including crits, he will have 40% chance effectively higher of doing that. And then stealing gear is the next one. At the start of each turn, 100% chance a random enemy gets disarmed for two turns. This is actually really nice because it's a guarantee and this can add disarm to certain teams that didn't have it before. So this is a really nice little addition and this is obviously going to count with precision where characters will have 40% chance less to you know less chance to resist this. Next one is called concussed. When this character performs their special skill, 60% chance a random enemy gets confused for three turns. This is obviously great. His specialist skill basically has a chance to confuse someone once for one turn if you crit. And then obviously this has a 60% chance to do it for three turns after that. And then with the rush, I think that gives four opportunities. I'll get this guy out of crit and we'll test it out in a second. Then we move on to the last one. It's called Brace the Cold. At the start of each turn, 100% chance a random enemy gets minus 10% defense for each fighter on the enemy team with a debilitating status effect for two turns we'll test this out of course i'll take a couple of characters that can do reasonable amounts of control just to see how effective this is going to be so here we are on turn two in the fight you can see i've got debilitating status effect on every single character on the enemy team and if you look at dr stevens he has minus 50 percent defense that just propped because of this this is going to be very useful when it comes to using certain abilities whether it be 
my ability on him himself. You can see huge amounts of damage improvement there. Now, what we want to see now is lots of crits. I put a crit weapon in his hands and everything. And we want to see if the extra confuses come out here. Um, we're going to see how many crits we're going to get. One, two, three, four. Did we have any other confuses come out? I don't know if we actually see any. Oh, we did actually get one land back on Noor. So it didn't go on any of the other characters, but Noor herself got confused for three turns. So it can confuse one of the characters in that line. So it's going to basically have a potential to boost that rush. You know, that rush now confuses two characters for one turn, but potentially another character for three turns, including potentially one of the characters that you're attacking in the first place. So a lot of potential there when it comes to control. Now, if we look at the upgrades on the passives, you can see it gets the first half of stealing gear at grade one. There's a 50% chance a random enemy gets disarmed for two turns. At grade two, it gets the first half of precision, making it 20% lower resistances against this character. At grade three, he gets the second half of stealing gear, making a 100% chance a character gets disarmed for two turns. And I think that's probably going to be underrated. It's actually been very good, that little boost there on the passives. At grade four, you can see the first half of concuss come in. Where well, there's a 20% chance a random enemy gets confused for three turns when he lands his specialist skill, which is going to be pretty useful. And then, obviously, at grade five, Brace the Cold Part 1 comes in, where there's a 50% chance a random enemy gets minus 10% defense for each fighter on the enemy team with a debilitating status effect. This lasts for two turns, and it's only going to be a 50% chance that we get him his turn for it to proc. But then when we move on to Limit Breaks, it obviously gets a little bit better. Precision 2 comes in, making it 40% lower resistances against his character. Concuss 2 comes in, making it 60% chance total to basically confuse another character for 3 turns when he lands his specialist skill. And then lastly, Limit Break 3, Brace the Cold 2 comes in, 100% chance to land a minus percentage defense at the beginning of his own turn, based on the amount of debilitating status effects on the enemy team. And I think all of his passives are actually pretty nice. It would be obviously better if the Concuss was a little bit higher percentage, but because he hits so many times on his rush, he obviously can get huge amounts of confuse off. And he can get that rush off quite quickly in the fight as well because you could potentially have him like focused by certain teams. He could be rushing turn two. Naturally, you could command him if he wanted to and just could get a lot of control in on the fight. And Confuse is pretty good, even though I think it's probably one of the slightly higher used resistances on defense teams. He's going to land it more often because he is a control character. So there is a big benefit there. So I like all of his passives quite a lot, actually. I think they work really well towards the rest of his kit to amplify what he can already do and actually boost stuff already. Like his rush looked okay-ish. It looked like it potentially could do some nice damage in the right scenario. But with these passives on top, and the specialist skill, obviously, it's going to just be adding a lot of control in there as well, which is nice. And talking of the specialist skill, it is confounding. It's pretty straightforward. When you hit a critical attack on a human target, that target will be confused for one turn. He is a control role character, so things like boosted resistances to crit hits are obviously going to be reduced because of his reduction to those. So even if you use them against a Rick lead, they'd only have a 10% chance to resist rather than 50% tanks cannot resist him so he's actually gonna be quite effective against the those sort of characters and there's quite a few tanks out there i think there's two fast tanks on those tyrese defense teams maybe even three if people are using eris so definitely usable against those uh, fast defense teams the fact that he does trait damage on top very nice indeed now winter benjamin does have an attached weapon it is that three quarters snowboard winter benjamin's broken snowboard it has got 40 percent attack a huge bonus to ap when attacking Improved healing stun when attacking a 60% chance to stun the enemy and regain 25% max HP for two turns. And then in the last one, it has improved ransack. Attack still three positive effects from the enemy you hit. Both of the last two slots obviously great. You can't craft these. These are boosted. And 60% chance to stun with a 40% resistance reduction because of his roll is going to be a very nice combo. You can do it on that signature move. You can do it with his basic attacks. And you can do it potentially four chances of hitting stuns on his adrenaline rush. Very nice indeed there. The improved ransack is nice. You could obviously swap this out if you don't like it. Or you could use a different weapon in his hands altogether if you so wish. The ransack basically going to steal away effects. And there are quite a lot of effect heavy teams at the moment. Where they you know add buffs and heal over times and halo and all this stuff and he'd just steal away three buffs he'd get those buffs himself but it's more about taking away from the enemy which is very useful i think this is a pretty simple upgrade weapon upgrade that main stat to 55 percent attack and you're pretty much done so this was a first look at gold mythic winter benjamin and like i said he is going to be the event character for the winter kingdom 
event. And I actually think he is a pretty good support character, obviously. He needs damage dealers in his team to be, you know, effective damage dealers. But I think he can do the job. I think he and, like, the likes of Ronaldo could definitely work together in some of these uh, free-to-play attack teams. Coming up against the Jesus, you know, and, and Tyrese and Martinez defense teams. And actually be quite effective. To add in quite a lot to it in terms of, like, the disarms, the effects and stuff like that. Which is very good against Jesus. If you can stack effects, it's very useful just because of the fact that um, he cleanses one randomly. So at the beginning of your turn, every time you would just put Disarm on him as the last character alive, and that has more chance of like the infection or something coming through and, and actually not being removed. So like I said, I think this character is pretty good. I think it's going to be quite useful. I'm definitely going to be getting him myself and going to be seeing how useful he is in actual like battle mode. But I've already got a, a pretty good strong attack team, like just all strong characters, and I think this guy probably... Will fit in somewhere i just gotta figure out who i'm gonna remove it's, that's gonna be the difficult part um, but do tell me your thoughts on winter benjamin are you going for him in the winter kingdom event let me know in the comments down below i want to thank you very much for tuning in and as always keep on surviving guys keep on surviving